Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem shortest path with alternating colors. We're given n nodes in a directed graph. So based on this example, we could be given a graph like this where each node will be numbered from zero all the way up until n minus one. So in this case, we have zero, one, two. And the interesting thing here is that we actually have edges in this case that yes, are directed, but they also have another property, which is the color of the edge. Now in this example, we have two red edges and zero blue edges, but I made it a little bit more interesting by adding both of the colored edges. And all we really want to do is start at node zero and find the length of the shortest path from zero to every other node in the graph and then return that in an array called answer. So at the zeroth position of the array, we'll have the shortest path length from zero up until zero. And then in the next position, we'll have the length of the shortest path from zero to node one. And then in the next spot, we'll have the shortest path from zero to node two. But it's even more interesting because it's not just the shortest path. We need a shortest path with alternating colors. So in this case, it's a pretty simple example. We have node zero. There's only one path from zero to one, and it just has a single edge. So it doesn't matter what color this edge is. It could have been blue. It could have been red. It doesn't matter because we started at zero. So technically this is an alternating edge. So the length of this path is just one. That's what we would mark for this position. Now, the only path from zero to two is this other path of length Two. And lucky for us, the colors are alternating. We started with blue and then had red. We could have had the opposite where we started with red and then had blue. It would make no difference as long as they are alternating. So we'd say the shortest path length to reach this node is two. Now in the actual example, this edge was actually red. In that case, the answer for this path would have been the same. The length is still one, but for zero to reach two, the colors are not alternating. So we return a default value for this node as negative one, because we couldn't find a valid alternating path to this node. So as with most shortest path algorithms, we are going to use a breadth first search approach to this problem. We only need to find the shortest paths starting at this node. So it should be easy enough, but there's just one catch that we have to f worry about. And that is making sure the paths are alternating. So as long as we can satisfy that condition, this problem shouldn't be too bad. So conceptually, we can solve this problem in a pretty easy way. That would be by running two breadth first searches on our graph starting at zero. Because we know we have to alternate edge color, we can start the breadth first search at this node where the first edge color is going to be blue and then find all possible shortest paths to every other node. Now, in this case, every edge coming out of zero is blue. So that would be the only valid starting edge color. But maybe if this one was red, then we could start by taking like the blue edge and then seeing what are the shortest paths we can get in that case, which would be one for this guy and then from here, we can't take this edge because it's also blue. So we would take this red edge and then say, okay, the shortest length to this guy is two. And then say for this guy, we are allowed to take this blue edge. So the shortest path to this is three. And then we would start at this node. Now the first edge color we're going to take is red. We're going to start with red and then we would not be able to take this edge, but now we can take this red one. So now we get to this guy, we say, well, we just found a path that's of length one, and that's shorter than the value that we had here, which is two. So we found a new shortest path length. This is going to be one now. And then from here, we can take this blue edge, and then we'd say the shortest path to this guy is now two instead of three. So that would be a pretty basic way to do this problem. Just a couple of breadth first searches, just change what our starting edge color is. And I'm going to be using this idea, but I'm going to be doing like a slightly more concise version, which is when we start here, there's no restriction. We can take blue or we can take red. So we do both. But now when we get to this guy, we have to mark the edge color we took to get here was blue. 
And we have to mark for here, the edge color we took to get here was red because that informs us on what edge color now we can take because maybe we reached this using a blue edge that would be impossible with this example, but you can imagine that maybe there is like a blue edge coming into this. So we have to keep track of what color edge we took to get to this node. And not only that, but we have to try multiple possibilities. We want the shortest path that gets us here given a red edge. And we want the shortest path that gets us here given a blue edge being its previous edge, because that will give us all possibilities. And then from here, we have all possibilities because in this case, there's only a blue outgoing edge, but you can imagine that there could have been a red outgoing edge as well. So we want all possibilities. And other than that, it's just going to be a basic breadth first search where we ensure that the edge colors, yes, are alternating. And we don't want to get stuck in cycles in our graph either. So yes, we are going to have a visit hash set. But this visit hash set will not just mark a node once. We're going to mark it two times, one for each incoming edge color, because remember, we want to have all possibilities. So we can't say a node is visited unless we visited it with a red edge and a blue edge, as long as both of those exist. Maybe they both don't exist, but we want to get all possibilities. And in this case, since we're doing both of those breadth first searches simultaneously, we kind of don't even need to take the minimum distance because we know that for any node, the first time we see it, it's going to be the minimum distance anyway, because we're doing the red and blue edges simultaneously. So in terms of time complexity, it's just a breadth first search. And even though we're doing it twice, the time complexity is still going to be big O of n multiplying n by any constant, whether it's two or 10 or 100, doesn't make a difference. It's still big O of n time complexity. We do have a visit hash set, so we are gonna need O of n extra memory. So now let's code this up. So while this problem isn't crazy hard, there's gonna be a lot of code. Let's start with our hash maps. Because we want to convert the incoming list of red edges and blue edges into adjacency lists, we're going to use a hash map for that. The default value for each of these is going to be a list because now when we go ahead and get the source and destination node in, let's say, our red edges first, we're going to say red for the source node, we want to append to its adjacency list the destination node. Now, if we key this, but we haven't even inserted source yet into this because this is a default dictionary with a default value of a list, this won't throw any exceptions or anything. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with our blue edges because these are directed edges. We only have to add the one-way connection from source to destination. Let's change this to our blue hash map. The names are not the best. You can definitely change the names if you prefer. I like to keep things concise for coding problems though, coding interview problems. Now let's go ahead and initialize our answer array. Usually I call this result, but in the context of this problem, they call it answer, so I'll do the same. We want to initialize this initially with just a bunch of negative ones. So for i in range for the number of nodes that we're given, we're just going to put a negative one everywhere, except we know the starting position is always going to be node zero. So we can say that the shortest path length from node zero to itself is just zero. Now we're going to be doing a breadth first search. So we want to have a deck. So in Python, a double ended queue, we can just initialize like this. The first value we want to add to it is the node zero, but we also want to be able to keep track of its distance and the color that we took to get here, which initially I'll just say is null. So just to make things more clear, the first value is the node, the second value is the length, and the third value is the previous edge color. This will make more sense as we actually go through the breadth first search. But lastly, before we start that, we do want a visit hash set. And initially, we'll add to that our current node that we just had. We don't need to keep track of its length when we mark it visited. So we'll just say zero is the node. And it was visited with a none previous edge color. That's just null. Doesn't really matter in this case. But the reason here I'm doing a tuple and here I'm doing a list is because with hash sets, you have to add tuples. You're not allowed to use arrays. 
So now let's do the breadth first search. So while our queue is non-empty, we're going to be popping left from the queue. When we pop, we get three values. We get the node, we get the length, and we get the previous edge color, which I'm just gonna call edge color. So we get these three values just like we added them up above. Now, if this is the first time we're visiting this node, how do we know that? Well, in our answer array at the index of this node, this will be equal to negative one, just like we initialized it. So if this is the case, then we just found the shortest path length. So here we'll say this is equal to the length that it took to get to this node, because that's what we appended. So for the first iteration of this loop, we're gonna pop the zeroth node and mark its length as being zero. So I guess up here, we actually didn't even need to do anything. So actually, let's get rid of that line. So now we wanna start going through the neighbors of this node. So what we could do is say, the edge color is equal to red, then we're gonna iterate through the blue neighbors. If it's equal to blue, then we're gonna iterate through the red neighbors. But notice how initially the edge color is null. So a better way to do this would be to say, if the edge color is not equal to red, then we're gonna go through all the red neighbors, which we can do like this. And in the opposite case, if the edge color is not blue, then we will go through all the blue neighbors like this. The good thing about this is that on the first iteration of the loop, this is null. So in that case, both of these are going to execute, which is exactly what we want to happen. We want to be able to go to the red and blue neighbors on the first iteration of the loop. But also, if the color was red, then we would only want to iterate through the blue neighbors and not the red neighbors. If the color was blue, then we'd only want to iterate through the red neighbors, not the blue neighbors. And that will also work in this case. So to fill this out, going through the red neighbors, it's just gonna be like a basic breadth first search where we want to check if this neighbor color combo, which is red, if this is not in visit, then we can go ahead and add it to being visited and we can then add it to the queue. We can append it to the queue, which we want to add three values, the node, the length, which is length plus one, length is the previous length and we just wanna add one to it now and the current color, which is also red, and then we want to fill out the rest of this. Basically, I'm copy and pasting because it's gonna be the same except the opposite. So we're gonna change all these reds to being blues. And I think that is pretty much it because we can visit the same node multiple times as long as we had a different incoming edge because we don't know which one of these paths is going to lead to us finding a different shortest path to other nodes. So we have to take both of these paths. And that's pretty much it for our breadth first search. When we're done, what we want to do is return the entire answer array, which is where we stored all the shortest paths. So that's the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.